In today's video, I'm going to be talking about some of the common UI design mistakes, most of which I'm guilty of myself, and how to do it right. Let's jump right in. Take a look at this screen right here. At first glance, it seems fine, but if you stare for more than two seconds, you'll notice something's off. And that's because I'm using loads of icon styles and sets on the same screen. Some icons are filled, some are outlined, some have sharp corners, and others are rounded. Even with the outline icons, they have different outline widths, creating disjointed and inconsistent feeling. The simple fix? You want to pick a good icon set, choose a style, and stick with it. Here's how it looks when I use the same set for all of the icons. My personal recommendations are Phosphor icons, which I'm using for this very example, Untitled UI, another great one, and Huge Icons library, all free to use. There is, however, one intentional exception here, and that is the field icon for the Home tab. This deliberate choice helps emphasize the active state of the navigation menu so it's clear where you are in the app. Take a look at this card right here. The corners don't perfectly align with each other, and here's how to fix it. First, you want to identify the elements which will have the radius. In this case, there are three, the card itself, the image, and the heart icon. Let's say I want to keep the image radius at 12. What people usually do is to measure the distance between the outer and the inner elements. In this case, it's 4 pixels, and add that to the inner radius, so 4 plus 12 gives us 16 for the card. Apply the same method to the heart icon, so 12 minus 4, and we have 8 pixels. There are exceptions though. Let's say I want to make the card larger and the outer radius is going to be 16, with 16 pixels padding value. If you follow the formula, you'll have 0 pixels for the image, which does not make any sense. In cases like this, I usually just eyeball it, but the main rule is that inner elements should always have smaller radius value. The deeper you go, the smaller the radius gets. This is a very simple mistake I still see in many apps, and that is keeping things aligned consistently. I have this delete modal example, and a lot of people have the icon and text center aligned, the heading itself center aligned, and keep the body copy left aligned, or vice versa. This makes the layout feel confusing. A very, very simple fix to this is that you want to keep your alignment consistent, whether it's left aligned or center aligned for all of the elements. Although I strongly advise against using right alignment as it's way harder for the eyes to follow the text. The number of characters per line affects whether users stick around to read the entire text or instantly scroll past it. This mostly applies to desktop and web designs, and I found that ideally you want to keep around 50 to 80 characters per line of text, including spaces. Here's a pricing page example. Notice how the body text is way too long. People might have to turn their head across the screen just to read all the text. And this is a much better, easier to read version as I condense it to roughly 70 characters per line. This is also why most articles and blogs you see look like this. White space does not always mean wasted space. It improves readability and gives content room to breathe. The next mistake happens often when you're designing responsive versions of web apps or websites, and that's forgetting to place important elements within a thumb-friendly area. Take this simple forget password screen. When designing the mobile view, a lot of people do it like this. This button is in an area that is not very thumb-friendly. You might have to reposition your phone if you're holding it with one hand just to reach the button. Instead, you want to move the main button down here where it's easily reachable. A small adjustment that makes the experience more comfortable. Naming buttons might seem like a simple task, but many people get it wrong by using generic or vague labels for important actions. I have a delete confirmation model here, and the call to actions simply say yes and no. It's unclear which button does what, and you'll have to read the text carefully to avoid accidentally deleting something. What you want to do instead is to use clear, specific labels. Here, the buttons say exactly what they do. Even without reading the whole text, users know what to expect when they tap any of the buttons. Another example from the previous forget password screen, 
The button labeled next does not give users a clear idea of what's going to happen. Am I opening my email app, receive an OTP, or do I get a reset link? Simply changing the label to send reset link to email sets clear expectations. Users know exactly what will happen. Remember, we don't want to make users keep guessing what comes next. The last mistake that I'll cover is overusing brand colors, which I did a lot when I was starting out. Here's the travel app screen. I'm using black as the brand color. The screen might feel a little cluttered with black elements with white text everywhere. It's overwhelming and reduces the impact of what we really want users to focus on, the main call to action button. A simple fix to this is that you want to tone down the secondary elements, like this review badge and amenities chips, by using subtle strokes or a slightly darker fill for light mode or a lighter fill if you're on dark mode. By reserving the brand color only for key actions, you help important elements stand out, creating a more balanced design. Well, that's it for the video. If you find it helpful, make sure to give it a like, consider subscribing, and I'll see you on the next one.